Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim. Um, I'm coming back with another prophetic word. Now look, this might be like a series because I cannot get off this particular book. I he, God keeps taking me back to Esther. So Esther, 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 Esther. And I've been reading the entire book of Esther over and over and over again. And it's a new revelation every single time. So this one might be a little shorter, but it packs the punch that it's supposed to pack, okay? Because everybody, I think, everybody should be implementing this one. Um, so look, real quick, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I praise you for this moment, for this, for this time, for the ability to be here. Thank you for allowing me to be the willing vessel to give your words um, that you pour into me. Um stand up big and tall in me decrease me increase you um let your people hear the message that you were trying to um give them um let them receive it with an open heart in the mighty name of jesus we know that your words do not return to you void in jesus name i pray amen okay so look god has been speaking boundaries he's been speaking boundaries for a while for the last three months maybe heavy heavy on the boundaries and re after reading and reading and reading and reading esther i'm like okay i see where you going with this i kind of i understand now why you've been speaking boundaries so once i got an esther and i read it about a good three times i'm like okay i, I believe i understand what you're trying to get me to see he was showing me how in esther um that there's a certain protocol there's a certain protocol to even get into the palace to get into the court to get into the inner courts you have to come you have to come at them a certain way so like in the beginning of esther um when esther was chosen that's a whole nother whoo, nope i'm not gonna go into that one because that's gonna be another one in itself another word in itself he was speaking to me about but even esther going into the court she had to come correct, meaning that she had to go through a whole process of of cleaning and grooming and this whole process of looking her best to be presented to the king. But that's another one for another day. We're not going there yet. We're not going there just yet. So stay with me on that. But so I'm going to just go to the scriptures that he gave me. Okay, so the first one is this is referring to Mordecai. So um, this is um, after Mordecai, Esther's cousin. I believe, but Mordecai found out that the king, king, I call him King X because King Xerxes, Xerxes, homeboy Haman had a plot to kill all the Jews, which is all of Mordecai and Esther's people. And he was like, oh, they're trying to kill us. No, like he was upset about it. So he was having a fit, tore his clothes up. He was in mourning. And to the point where he was outside of the palace bawling his face off and he had on his mourning clothes. So this is a, this is the first scripture. So he went, meaning Mordecai, he went as far as, um, he went as far as the gate of the palace. No one was allowed to enter the palace gate while wearing clothes of mourning. First boundary. That's one of the, one of the, one of the first hardcore boundaries. You can't enter. You can't, you can't go in everywhere just looking like anything, regardless of what's going on or not in your personal life, what's going on or not. So, the, all right, God, help me, help me. Cause I'm trying not to go too fast. Try not to go too fast. Yes. Okay. We stay in there. He says, stay there. You cannot go anywhere looking like any old thing thinking that you can just get in you have access doesn't work like that if you feel that you're a person that you want people to take you a certain way approach you a certain way handle you a certain way you have to carry yourself as such you can't just be out here looking raggedy and doing whatever and think that everybody just going to treat you the same way. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. So boundary number one, set one for yourself and tell yourself that if I'm going somewhere and I'm going to be something and I'm going to be somebody, I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm out here looking 
like something. I'm out here looking my best. That's the first thing. That's the first thing he pointed out to me about boundaries. So a boundary for ourselves, you got to put yourself together. You can't be out here just looking like whatever. That's the first thing he gave me. So I'm going to go back to the scriptures. And that was Esther chapter 4, verse 2. That's the first thing, first one he pointed out to me. So the second one he pointed out, second and third scriptures he pointed out was Esther chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. And these are all the New New Living Translations, so NLT versions. And it says, then Esther told Hethok to go back and relay. Hethok was a... um, like Esther's um, messenger person that will go and run do stuff for her. Hethok to go back and relay message, uh, relay this message to Mordecai. All the king's officials and even the people in the provinces know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court without being invited is doomed to die unless the king holds out his gold scepter. And the king has not called for me to come to him for 30 days. So let me give you a little backstory on this real quick. So at this point, um, Mordecai was outside crying. Outside, quite frankly, looking raggedy. So uh, Esther's people let Esther know what was going on and say, hey, your, your, your homeboy, your cousin is out there. He outside the, the gate uh crying and looking raggedy and we just wanted to let you know what was going on and esther tried to send him clothes so he can change so he was able to come in the inner the inner court to come in the gate or whatever and mordecai was like no i don't want i don't want to come in but you know esther you being you you got to do something about this like uh uh, Hamik is is trying to kill off our people. Like these are our people. This is where we come from. This is who we are. This is our stock. This is the blood that runs in our veins. They, they're trying to take us out. And Esther said, "Well, I can't just walk in to the king's inner court without being invited. Like there's a certain protocol I have to follow in order to get into that inner court." So. I could die if I'm not invited to get in there. Um, so it's been about 30 days since he asked me to actually come anywhere near him. So after the, that scripture, it actually goes on to proceed. I think she was hanging out in the garden or whatever. And the king did actually see her hanging out there. And the king loved her so much. He got so much, she got so much favor with him that he saw her out there and invited her to come in the inner court. That's another one for another day. Cause I could, I can go into that one too. Cause it's something when you have favor with people and you don't know when you just show up and you have favor with people. That's another one. We're not going to go into it because I could go there. Esther st- stepped out on faith and was like, I'm going to dis- I know I'm not supposed to, cause I could die. I could die. If I mess up this rule and regulation and this boundary to go to get to the king to talk to him about my people. So God was speaking about that. And when I read about that, he said, now I want you to go read and research how the royals, like the royals in England, the the queen of England, how they operate and how their protocol is. And he, he said, I want you to see how you can't just walk up to the queen. And say, what's up? Dap her up. Give her a hug. Give her a kiss on the cheek. How you doing? Let me text you sometime. You can't do that. You can't even send her a letter straight up. You have to go through so many different people. So many hard stops before anything can actually get to her. There's so many different things that get vetted before the queen actually sees a person, meets a person, lays her eyes on a letter Um, A phone call that gets to her is so many boundaries in place. Now, I know that sounded like a lot that I was saying, and I'm hoping this makes sense, but I'm going to keep moving. So, I said that all to say, if you hold yourself, and you should, you should hold yourself to a certain level of prestige, to a certain level of, I know I'm somebody, and I can't be around everything and anybody. 
I have to set boundaries for myself. Basic principles. You have to set boundaries for yourself and tell people how they need to operate when they're in your presence. You need to tell people and give them instructions on how to deal with you. You need to give instructions to people on how to operate in your space. If they, if people are doing things that you don't go for, you need to let people know that that's a hard boundary. I don't go for that. Either you can roll or I'll, I'll remove myself. We can do this really cool or not. I don't know. However you want to do it. Don't make it a really difficult situation. But in all honesty, everyone needs boundaries. You can't accept anything and everything into your space. You have to protect your inner court. Because if you if you have so you are such a prize, you are such a you are you're just such a prize. If you if you are royalty, like I know I'm royalty. I know I'm royalty. So I can allow anybody to come into my inner court because that that means I have precious things that I hold near and dear in this inner court and I can't just have anybody coming into this inner court you never know what anybody's intentions are you never know if anybody has an intention on clearly they know that you're valuable but they might try to take something um and not even just physical things I'm talking about stealing your happy happiness stealing your joy your peace your mental capacity to even deal with the things that you're supposed to be doing if you're building things like I'm building a business I'm building businesses let me get that right I'm building businesses building a community building a network building ministry so many different things I'm building I can't afford to allow just anything or anybody to come into my inner court. Like, it's no games anymore. We don't have time for that. We have, it's so much going on, and it's so many people that we need to get out here and help that we can't, we don't have time for foolishness. We don't have time for the mess around. So you got to teach people how to treat you, Teach people how to know how to handle you and your space and your time. Your time, your time is very valuable. And you cannot sit here and give up your time for foolishness. We don't have time for that anymore. We're giving that up. No, we gave that. I gave that up. We're giving that up. We're done with that. Done. So you have to make sure you implement boundaries to protect yourself and protect your family and protect you and your significant other. Because I refuse, I refuse to allow anything to disrupt the peace that we have and the things that we have going because we're building. We're building individually and we're building together and we can't let anything get in the way and disrupt that. So same for y'all. You can't let anything get in the way to disrupt whatever it is. If you're, you're healing, don't let anything disrupt that. If you're in a peaceful place, don't let anything disrupt that. If you're trying to get there, it's okay. But it, it's great that you're learning this now so you can know to, okay, well, how do I start implementing boundaries? You know, start thinking about the stuff that, the, that you feel is not cool. It's, you can't let everybody into your space. So what is it something that you're like, eh, I don't know if I would like somebody to do to do that when they interact with me. Or if there are things that make you feel uncomfortable, what is it like, start thinking about stuff that you're like, nope, that's a hard no for me. I don't like that. I don't feel comfortable with that. Don't do X, Y, and Z when you're around me, when you're near me. Don't address me as such. But it's very needed and necessary. Everybody can't have your phone number. Everybody can't have your direct number. You can't respond to every DM. You can't respond to every text message. You can't respond to every message. You can't respond to every post. You can't respond to everything. You cannot. You cannot. At what point do you protect yourself, your mental, your spiritual, your physical, and your family? boundaries you got to put boundaries in place heavy heavy on the boundaries it's heavy on the boundaries
So that was one of the things that came up, um, one of the revelations that came up while I was reading Esther. So view yourself as royalty because you are. God views his kids as royalty. He love you. He, he views his kids as royalty. So view yourself as such. Buy a crown if you got to. Put it on your head. Buy a, buy a scepter. Buy a, um, a robe. Whatever you have to do to view yourself as royalty. But then you make sure you make clear cut boundaries and set those in place. Because everybody can enter into your inner court. Everybody can. That's just how it is. And that's okay. And people will have to be okay. Some people may be upset. They'll be all right, but they'll be okay at the end of the day. And you'll be okay too. You'll be a much happier person. So that's all I have. That's all I have for this one. Like next week, I might, I'm, we're going to see what God say. Cause I, he had me and Esther back to back. So we're going to see. Cause this, these, uh, these 10 chapters, Esther is only 10 chapters, but it's so much stuff in it. Okay. Okay. So I love y'all. Thank y'all for stopping by until next time. Y'all have a good day. Take it back to God. Take this one back to God. But I know everybody needs boundaries at the end of the day. It doesn't matter who you are, but take the prophetic word back to God. All right. I love y'all. Talk to y'all later. Bye.